So we're going to kick off with Saturday's Telegraph for some good old-fashioned election hot takes. Yes, so this is the Labour election result is the most distorted in history. Party wins nearly two-thirds of seats and with a third of the popular vote, outpacing gap recorded in 2001 under Tony Blair. Now, it's interesting because Adam Brooks, who appears on this channel, had tweeted that we have to remember that 80% of UK citizens didn't vote for Labour. Yes. So yes. that's the that yes exactly. That so is. then, surely, with all this badinage about this subject, mm -hmm. we would have to then be discussing proportional representation and a reforming of our electoral system as is. Yeah. Well, exactly. Speaking of reform, count uh, Nigel Farage has come out asking for proportional representation. Yet there is some irony there in that we did have a referendum for proportional representation that the country decided to, to not oh, to go yeah. with. So having a second referendum seems... <gasps> that sounds familiar. Yes. yes. Yeah. But this time yeah. it would serve his interest yes, for, for there to yeah. be another referendum. Yeah, but it's like, the, the first-past-the-post system is a complete joke. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not a believer in democracy myself. But it's just... Well, you, what, what do you... What that, I, I love how nervous that makes people. Okay, okay. Libertarian, don't okay. worry. Not fascism. I don't want a government. <laughs> but it's basically... You would think that democracy is supposed to be the will of the people via majority, but under the first-past-the-post system, it's not about being the majority, it's about being the biggest minority. Mm -hmm. Right, so see how they only got, like, 33.8% of the vote? That means only a third of people who voted actually got what they wanted. The other two-thirds of people didn't get what they wanted. Uh, that's a joke of a system. So, they, But then, of course, the alternative is when you have proportional representation, you have something like the Netherlands, and then you're talking about coalition governments, which can take months to form, and arguably then do people get what they want and it, at that point, it bogs well. the system down and makes yeah. the government start to fail. So you're start, a, you you're know, exposing the, my plan. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, no, but there's, what's to say? There's an you know democracy is imperfect, but it's the best we've got. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was but, like someone the other day that was going on about free speech, and they went, "Yeah, I'm all for free speech, but when it's the right kind of free speech, which I didn't understand." Yeah. Also, yeah. as well, the turnout has dropped. Mm. to a new level. And it was interesting because I was watching Mary Black from the SNP who was discussing, you know, the problems with the postal votes, the, the date was incorrect and all this kind of stuff. And also the thing that surprised me, and I've met her a couple of times, I think she's quite nice, but she said, I discovered it was raining in Scotland today. I'm wondering if that affected the turnout. And it's like, it rains in Scotland every day, whether it's a summer. We had uh, an election in Scotland, I think, in November, and Ian Blackford was appalled it was a general election, I think, in November or December, and he was appalled because people in his constituency, there was no street lighting. So they couldn't go out at night, and according to Mary, she's now worried that if there's a bit of rain and you're Scottish, you may or may not want to vote. But one person that didn't vote was Nicola Sturgeon's sister. OK, how, how do you know that? You've been following her? I, no, no, not at all. I'm, I'm not like that. I just keep an eye on certain people. Uh, no, she'd, <laughs> <laughs> she'd come out and said that um, she was disgusted with the sleaze and corruption in Westminster. She thought it was a At least appalling. one of her family came out. Well, absolutely. Oh! What a... Ah, uh, that was very <laughs> clever as a camper van owner. Um, how nice. Um, but, yeah, she was saying there was no party that she could actually vote for, well, I was, including the SNP. Well, fair enough. Imagine. To be honest, I was very close to spoiling my ballot. I didn't know what I was going to do in the... Uh, Why would you...? I don't understand. As, uh, spoiling a ballot as opposed to not voting shows that it's a protest vote. And also, mm -hmm. if you write on it, the politicians yeah. all have to look at the message right. on the ballot itself. So if you have a, a particularly mm -hmm. concise message like respect women's rights or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then that would be there. But in the end, I just went for Labour and then I just got loads of abuse about it all day on Twitter, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> uh, one final thing I will say on this is that it's been an amusing day online to see there's been a lot of hot takes about how Labour has lost today from people who, who are sort of going, well, this shows that really Labour lost by using these kind of figures, and it feels to me a bit like they're trying to sort of justify their previous hot takes, if that makes sense. No. We've got the left and the far and the right, and they're, everybody's going, this just shows how Labour really lost the hearts and minds, as opposed to the fact that, look, they're in power now, and let's just get on with it. Mm. Yeah.